Mm. Oh my God, this is really good. Hey guys, today is an amazing and exciting day. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and today we are going to make one of my husband's favorite. Do I care about football? No, I do not. Like any woman, well, there are some women that like football. I personally couldn't care for it, but do I want to make my husband happy? Of course I do. So today, come join me as we make homemade chili. And ladies, the way to your man's heart is definitely through his stomach. So make this recipe, feed it to your husband, give him the TV for football, and I guarantee you they will be happy. So come join me in the kitchen and we'll make my version of homemade chili. Before we start, take a minute, hit that subscribe button, support my channel so that we can grow together and hit that notification bell for any future videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video or if your husband enjoyed the chili and please leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see in future episodes. I always like to see what my viewers want. So to start, Heat up your um, medium-sized or large-sized uh, saucepan. Um, I like this one because it's my heavy uh, cast iron one and I find it cooks very well and it doesn't stick. And what you're going to do is you're going to spray it with some non-stick cooking spray. And I have here two honey garlic sausages that have been, uh, the casing has been removed. And I've got my pan on already so you can hear it sizzle. And so we're just going to break that up in the pan because we're going to start browning our meat. And I'll leave a full recipe for you guys. So this way you can um, see the recipe, see all the ingredients. And one thing I have to say, there are so many versions of chili that you can easily take something out and replace it with something else and no chili is alike so you can do your own thing cooking is very intuitive so just use your common sense so to our sausages the honey garlic sausages that have been browning I'm going to add 500 grams of ground beef and we're going to brown this as well. Okay, so this has been cooking for about 10 minutes and as you can see it's not fully cooked but it's almost there. And you will see that there are all the juices left still in the pan. So we want those juices. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start draining, scooping it out because we're going to do other stuff in this pot. It's basically a one pot meal. And you want those juices because that's what's going to give flavor to your chili. Okay, so I've scooped out all the meat. Now what I'm left with, as you can see, are the juices. They're still going. I'm going to be adding about one tablespoon of olive oil to those juices. Okay, and we'll just give it a mix. Now, if you leave little bits in here of meat, it's perfectly fine. <coughs> Nothing will happen. And to this, we're going to add one whole white sweet onion, uh, coarsely chopped. Okay. Put that there. One red bell pepper, coarsely chopped as well. Okay. 
and one pound of thinly sliced uh, white mushrooms. Now you can slice them yourself uh, if you have a mandolin. I used my number two setting on the mandolin. And yes, I do use a mandolin very carefully, even though I'm visually impaired. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Okay, and what we want to do is we just want to saute our vegetables here, the onion, the pepper, and the mushrooms, until they are wilted and soft. So probably I would say about five minutes in those juices from the meat and the olive oil. I would put it on a medium high heat. Okay. These are going, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start seasoning with a little bit of black pepper. If you don't like black pepper, you're more than welcome to use white pepper. I would say about a teaspoon and a little bit of salt. And what the salt does is it helps extract the juices from the vegetables. Get a stir, it's coming along. Okay, so this is pretty much done. As you can see, it's wilted down. Now to this, we're going to add about one pound of pancetta that has been cubed. Now, if you don't have pancetta, you can, oops, you can um, substitute bacon. So you wanna put that in. And pancetta is basically the Italian version of bacon. So, same idea. Here, okay. And you wanna give it a stir with the vegetables. And just let it simmer with those vegetables to get those uh, nice juices out of the pancetta, the flavorful, um, I don't want to say grease, but technically that's what it is. The fat will come out of it and flavor your, your chili. So give it a stir and leave it on for about another five minutes. All right, so this is pretty much where I want it to be. And I'm going to be adding now one can. Now I unfortunately did not have diced tomatoes. I would prefer that you use diced tomatoes. I did not have them, so I'm using crushed tomatoes, but it's up to you. I just didn't have any more, and it's 800 milliliters that you want to use. And if you have your own, um, you know, jarred from your garden, as I always say, even better. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick. I am going to pour my white wine into my tin because I want to get all the residue of the tomato sauce. So kind of rinse the can out. And what I'm adding now is about a cup and a half of dry white wine. So there we go. So that's in. Okay, give it a good stir. And just scrape the bottom. Make sure you're getting all the goodness off the bottom. Okay, so we've got our wine, our sauce, everything's coming nicely together. Okay, it's simmering. And what we want to put in now is our beans. So I've got here one can of, I believe it's Romano beans, but you, ooh, you can use uh, kidney beans if you prefer. Where's my, okay, so I'll get everything out of there. And if you prefer to, um, soak your own beans and cook your own beans, you can definitely do that. 
the more power to you. I just prefer these cans are very um, convenient for me. I'm also adding one can of navy beans. And yes, you want to add the liquid that is stored, the beans are stored in, because that will add thickness and flavor to your chili. Okay. And lastly, we're going to be adding baked beans. Okay, so this has been simmering, and to this we're going to add, I like to use this, you don't have to use this, you can use um, just dry spices, but I like to use an herb bouillon, okay, so if you don't like using bouillons, you don't have to, you can just use um, some rosemary, basil, okay, and then to that I'm going, oops, wrong one. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of thyme and a little bit of oregano. So I would say about a tablespoon of oregano and a teaspoon of thyme. Okay, I'll just throw that in. And my secret weapon, maple syrup. So about two tablespoons of maple syrup. And yes, folks, I'm going to be using my hands for this. My hands are clean, but being blind, my hands are my helpers. Okay, just give it a stir, get everything incorporated. Okay. And last but not least, we're gonna throw in one dried chili pepper. Now these are from my godfather's backyard so one is enough because they're very um, potent little creatures so we'll just throw that in whole and give it a good mix so what I've done here is in my other big pot I've put back the meat that we sauteed previously okay so what we're going to do now is that's warming up so we're going to warm that turn that on there it goes. Did I get the right one? No, I did not. See what happens when you can't see what the heck you're doing? Okay, now I got the right one. Yes, okay. So we're going to start warming that back up, the meat. And once we are done, I'm going to ask for a little bit of assistance. But basically what's going to happen is I'm going to put the contents of this saucepan into my larger saucepan with the meat, and we're going to marry everything together. All right, so we've done the transfer. Now, that happened just because I underestimated the volume, but what you can do is, like I said, it's a one pot meal, so technically do it in your bigger one. That was a mistake on my part, but hey, it happens. So we've got the meat, we've got our beans, our chili, our tomato sauce, our maple syrup. It's all in here, all our onions and mushrooms and peppers and all the goodness. And what we're going to do now is just once it's all incorporated, we're going to let it simmer on low for about anywhere between four and six hours. So put a lid on it and as that famous saying says, put a lid on it and forget about it and walk away. Every once in a while, go up to it, give it a little stir, make sure it's not sticking to the bottom or loosen up all those little pieces of flavor at the bottom and we'll see you back in about four to six hours. All right. So we're about, I would say about five hours in, and we're gonna check on our chili. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna just give it a nice stir. Oh, nice and thick, look at that. Beautiful. There we go. Ooh, be 
careful. There we go. All right. So our chili's done, guys. We're almost ready for that football game. Okay. And I just want to show you when it's plated. So there you have it. We have a nice bowl of chili, and we just put a little bit of, um, uh, you can put a baguette. I had some uh, nice uh, white Italian pizza on the side, so you can serve it like that, or if you have any, um, whatever you like. Uh, you can do bagels, whatever, just something just to uh, mop up all that beautiful sauce. Okay, and I'm going to actually taste right now. Oh, delicious. Really good. You can really taste the bacon. Um, you can taste the meat. And it's just got a little, little, little bit of kick to it. Not crazy, but if you want more spice, you can go ahead and put it in. I'm not a huge fan of spice, but really, really good. Nice and thick. So definitely get in your kitchens. You have enough time before that football game to uh, make this dish and make your husbands happy. That's how you keep them happy. And if you like this recipe and you wanna check out another hearty meal, go ahead and check out my loaded baked potato soup recipe, which I've posted. That's another great meal to give to your husbands to make them happy. Until next time, get in your kitchens, start cooking, and we'll see you next time. Take care.